All right. Hi, Professor Jory. It's back, Reco 1001. We're here in recitation, and we're going to finish up Chapter 3 on Comparative Advantage. And this is a, a sticky chapter for students. It really causes, I think, some difficulty working out these comparative advantage kinds of situations. So I'm going to take a kind of nasty one, a pretty hard one, and I'm going to go through it pretty slowly and make sure we're all on the same page about this. So on your handout, the quiz you should have posted, it's problem number seven. I have drawn the chart that exists on that table and I put it up here. So we have two parts of this, this problem, right? It says hours needed to make one car or hours needed to make one plane. Airplane, plane I'm using, all right? And this is quantity produced in 24 hours. So if this is how many hours it takes to produce one car or one plane, either Japan or Korea, this is going to be the total amount. So I'll go through this in more detail in a minute, but just make sure you understand the basic kind of schematic problem here. Now, why the constraints? Well, remember we've been doing work on the production possibility frontier. And the whole notion there is that countries are constrained in their resources. We would love to produce more cars and planes, but we're limited. And so this is giving us a limit. The limit is labor, and the number, number of hours a labor can work. In, in this case, we're going to use 2,400 hours as our limitation. So that bounds us, right? We cannot get outside a certain level of production if we produce ourselves. The deal, or the point here, is that firms, or excuse me, countries, firms or individuals, by specializing in the good for which they have a comparative advantage, can basically get outside the constraints of their individual production possibility frontiers by specialization and trade. So that's what we're going to talk about and kind of push this example here. So let's get oriented. Hours needed to make one car. So in Japan, they need 30 hours to make one car. If you have 24 hours in total, how many cars can you make? Well, you'll take the 24 hours that's available to all, if you put all your time to cars, you divide by the 30 hours necessary to make one car, 2400 divided by 30 gives me the 80 cars. So if Japan wants to, they can devote all their labor to producing cars and they can make 80 cars. How about Korea? Korea takes them 50 hours to produce a car. All right. Again, they also only have 2400 hours available to the entire country. So in this particular case, you would take the 2400 divided by 50 hours per car and that's how we get 48 cars. In other words, if, if Koreans devoted all their labor to the production of cars, taking 50 hours per car, 24 hours in total available, they could get 48 cars. 24 divided by 50. Do the exact same thing for planes. All right, it takes 150 hours to make a plane in Japan. It takes 150 hours to make a plane in Korea as well. So if we take all 2,400 hours and we devote it to making planes, at 150 hours per plane, we see that Japan can produce 16 planes. Korea has the same kind of productivity in plane production as does Japan. If they devote all 2,400 hours to the production of planes at 150 hours per plane, they also can get 16 planes. So often, this would be our production possibility frontier. We'd have a graph, we'd have Japan and Korea, and I'll draw one for you right now, just quickly. It would look something like this, right? We've done this in class. If this is Japan, their production possibility frontier would look like this. We'd have 80 cars here, and we'd have something like 16 planes here. So planes and cars, and that would be Japan's production possibility frontier. That's what it would look like. Korea's would look more modest. It would have 48 right here as the amount, but then it would also go right down to here. In other words, if Korea, devoted no time to the production of planes and all its labor to cars, it could produce 48. If Japan devoted all its labor to cars, it could produce 80. If both countries reversed and, and devoted all their labor to the production of planes, they could both get 16. Again, 2400 divided by 150 gives you the 16. So this is the basic setup of the problem. And I can ask you one other question that's not on this problem here, but just in general, which country has an absolute advantage in the production of either good? Well, absolute advantage means that the, this country can produce that particular good with less resources. Our resource here is labor. Japan clearly has an absolute advantage in the production of cars relative to Korea. They are equally productive in the production of planes because it takes them both 150 hours to produce a plane. 
So then the question becomes, well, does either country have a comparative advantage? And if so, does, are there any gains to be obtained here from trading with each other and specializing? Let's see. All right. So what I want to know is assume that Japan and Korea each has 2,500 hours available. Originally, each country divided its time equally between the production of cars and planes. Now each country spends all its time producing the good which has a comparative advantage. As a result, the total output of cars increases. That's a tough problem. First thing we have to do is find out in which good the countries have comparative advantages. So I've always said you do this. You say, how many cars are equal to how many planes? So Japan can have 80 cars, and that will be equivalent to 16 planes. Again, if they devote all their labor to cars, they get 80. All their labor to planes, they get 16. Let's divide by 80 here. Divide by 80. And now we get that one car is equal to 16 divided by 80, or one-fifth of a plane. So for Japan, Every time they produce a car, they give up a fifth of a plane. Let's reverse it. We can multiply both sides by five, and now we know for Japan that five planes, excuse me, one plane is equal to five cars. Again, all I did was multiply both sides by five. Obviously, this is the reciprocal, right, of this and this. So I got one plane. So this is Japan's opportunity cost. All right, that's for cars, that's for planes. How about Korea? Well, Korea can produce 50 cars, which is equal to also 16 planes. Okay? Excuse me, 48 cars. Sorry. I knew the numbers had to work out better than that. 48 cars to 16 planes. We divide both sides by 48. We end up with one car is equal to 16 divided by 48, or one-third a plane. Okay, so this is G, um, this is Korea's opportunity cost, right? They can have 48 cars, all right, or 16 planes, and Japan can have 80 cars and or 16 planes. All right, basic numbers. Now, what do we do with this? So what does it say? This says every time I didn't reverse this. Let me just give you the flip of this. Therefore, we know that uh, three cars are equal to one plane. All right, what do we do with this? It says to us now that every time Japan produces a car, they only give up a fifth of a plane. But every time Korea produces a car, they give up a third of a plane. Clearly, a third is larger than a fifth, all right? So for Japan, the opportunity cost of producing a car is less in terms of planes than it is for Korea, because their opportunity costs a third of a plane. Let's go the other way. Every time, well, I don't know if I get too, too far, every time Japan produces a plane, they give up five cars. Every time Korea produces a plane, they give up three cars. So planes are relatively expensive in Japan because it costs them five cars, and they're relatively cheap in Korea because it only costs them three cars. So, have we reached it? Yes. Each country is going to specialize in the good force. They have a comparative advantage. In this case, Japan has a comparative advantage in the production of cars. Korea has a, a comparative advantage in the production of planes. Long way to get to this problem, but it's a very useful way to kind of air this stuff out. Now, it says each country spends all its time producing the good in which it has a comparative advantage. Each country spends all the time producing the good for which it has a comparative advantage. So Japan is going to spend all its time devoted to cars, all right? And Korea is going to spend all its time devoted to planes, all right? That's after specialization. It says originally, and I'll write it down here, this is originally, each country devoted half their time to the production of each good. So if this is Japan, and this is Korea, if Japan spent half its time on cars, and half its time on planes, Korea would have 40 cars, half this number, and it would have eight planes. Excuse me, maybe I said Korea, it should be Japan. If you go to Korea now, and they spend half their time on cars and half their time on planes, they will get half of this, which is 24, and they'll get half planes, which is eight. So now the question is, 
Now they specialize. So now specialize. But they specialize in a particular way. They specialize in the good for which they have a comparative advantage. For Japan, that means cars. So now Japan produces 80 cars and zero planes, all right? And Korea does the opposite. They produce zero cars and 16 planes because they're going to specialize in the production of planes. So what does it mean? So what's this question asking us? It says, now each country spends all its time producing the good for which it has a comparative advantage. We've just done this right here. All right? As a result, total output of cars increased by... Oh, wait a minute. Output of cars before specialization was 64. Output of cars after specialization is 80. So now, if you think about it, when countries didn't specialize, tried to produce both things themselves, the total amount of cars available to the world, let's say, was 64. Now, with specialization in Japan, a very efficient producer of cars, is producing only cars, the world now has the opportunity of output of 80. All right? We're heading towards this world in which this is going to be a comparative advantage. We're going to trade and make some gains here. All right. The answer turns out to be 16. It's A. In other words, the difference in world production of cars is now 16. Before, when each country produced by themselves, half of each good, the total output in the world was 64. Now with specialization, total of the output is 80. That is a gain of 16. The answer to number 8 is A, 16. Nothing else will work. All right? Good. Let's stop there. Let me kind of reconstitute this diagram, and I'll come back, and we'll continue with number 9.